Hello, everyone, and welcome. My name is Martina, and I'm the moderator of this online session on behalf of the School Selection Platform, UNIMAI. In today's webinar, you will learn more about the MBA program at the Queen's Management School at Queen's University, Belfast. A few words about the school and the program. Queen's University, Belfast is one of the oldest universities in the United Kingdom and forms part of the elite Russell Group. Um, so its MBA uh, is a uh, EMBA accredited intensive career development program, and it focuses on entrepreneurship, business analytics, and business ethics in international environment. So please, uh, if you have any questions, type them in the Q&A box or in the chat box. And our guest today will take time to give you an answer at the end of this session. Now, let me introduce you our speakers today, uh, Dr. Martin Kelly, who is a senior lecturer in accounting, and Stephen Armstrong, who is an MBA administrator. So now I'm giving the floor to you guys. Uh, thank you, Martina. Um, I'll, I'll start today by uh, introducing uh, Queen's Management School and, and our MBA. Uh, first of all, uh, welcome everyone and uh, apologies that uh, due to a, a technical hitch, my, my webcam is not working today, uh, so you uh, will not be able to see me. Um, however, uh, I do have some slides I'd like to share with you, so hopefully you can see uh, them. And I'll also be sharing some uh, video clips from some of our alumni and recent graduates. Uh, from, from the management school and from our MBA program. So as uh, Martina mentioned, uh, Queen's is the, the ninth oldest university in the UK. Uh, can, can, can you hear me okay? Um, my screen's gone. Yes, perfect. Yeah, yeah. We, uh, yeah. Okay, my, my screen's gone uh, uh, a bit strange there. So Queen's is the, the ninth oldest university in the UK. As you can see, it's got a, a beautiful uh, red brick campus. Um, and as Martina mentioned, it's, it's part of the Ivy League, uh, sorry, the Russell Group, which is uh, 24 uh, research intensive universities often referred to as the UK's Ivy League. Uh, Queen's Management School is, is also located in a, in a beautiful heritage building dated from uh, 1913. Um, we are very uh, lucky to have such a, a beautiful um, and historic campus to, to host our MBA program. But Queen's is also a, a university that is uh, looking towards the future, and we're very much focused on, on diversity. Um, in uh, 2020, we were delighted to announce uh, uh, Secretary Hillary Clinton as, as our first ever female chancellor. Uh, Queen's is a, a highly ranked university and, and frequently appears in the top 200 uh, world university rankings. And uh, we are accredited um, by ECWA, so our management school has been awarded um, the internationally recognized Equus accreditation, which is held by uh, just 197 business and management schools across the world, uh, which makes it quite an, an exclusive accreditation and puts us in the top 1% of business schools worldwide. In addition to that, our MBA program has been accredited by AMBA, the Association of MBAs. This is another um, internationally recognized accreditation, a very prestigious award, which is capped at 300 uh, MBA programs worldwide. So we are, we are very um, lucky and very privileged to have received this uh, accreditation for our MBA program. Uh, so that's a very brief overview um, about the, the history of our university and a little bit about our uh, business school, but um, I'd like to share with you now some uh, views from some of our MBA students. And we're going to hear from Jessica, from Pooja, and from uh, Nain.
Well, Queens certainly stood out to me as a, of course, as a Russell Group, you know, as a Russell Group University, and um, being able to bring forward that academic rigor that I was really looking for. Um, the other reason I chose Queens was because it had a tremendous amount of scholarship opportunity available to me as an international student. And I was able to take advantage of that as a postgraduate impact scholar, which also afforded me several other opportunities to be able to be involved in the local community. I also know that Queens has a lot of international students and offers a very good and diverse uh, atmosphere wherein the international students feel very comfortable. Belfast is a very, very beautiful city. It has a lot to offer to everyone who comes here. People here are very warm and welcoming and very kind. And I think, you know, that is what international students want. They want to feel welcomed and that is what the city does here. There are a lot of multinational companies who have their offices in Belfast and they are willing to you know, give jobs to people from diverse backgrounds. That is also one of the uh, biggest advantages that Belfast offers to the students who are studying here. I didn't have a chance to stay at student accommodation, um, but, you know, I have a couple of friends who are there, so I kind of visited the place a couple of times. Um, the has really spacious common rooms, table tennis, pool tables. I really enjoyed it. Um, you know, it's good to pass time if you're not studying in these trips. Um, but apart from that, the price, um, you know, out of all the places I've lived, Belfast is noticeably cheaper um, in terms of accommodation, food, or transportation. Um, so yeah, I've lived in a couple of places before, but compared to all those, this is the cheapest I've, yeah, cheapest place I've stayed, which is really nice as well. The, the city has provided me more than a student life. Um, it's now getting, it's getting to me like it's a home now. So basically I'll definitely, you know, recommend this to any students that plan to come to Queens um, to, you know, and especially to those that are fans of Game of Thrones, uh, I'll definitely want them to come here and enjoy the place. Yeah. So just a few um, uh, views of our of our MBA students. Uh, one of the things that Nang uh, raised there, the, the cost of living. Um, we're very lucky in Belfast that um, we have among the lowest cost of living of any uh, major town or city in the UK, which really helps to make your um, MBA journey at, at Queen's that bit more affordable. But I'd like to talk now a little bit about the MBA program itself and a bit about the, uh, the structure and the content of the program. I'll, I'll begin by talking about um, how this program came about in its, in its current form. It was developed through a, a, a widespread consultation process, which took in um, the views of, of large organizations, of small to medium enterprises uh, and public sector, um, to find out really what they were looking for and what they felt was missing from uh, uh, MBA graduates or, or master's graduates in general. And the, the, the MBA was developed with a view to, to meeting these needs. And some of the things that came out of that discussion were uh, the focus on, on leadership skills and developing leadership capability within the individual, uh, not just as an academic subject, but something that they're able to put into practice. Similarly, with business ethics and sustainability, we're all familiar with the concepts, but very often uh, even graduates struggle to, to know how to um, operationalize these within their, their business practice. Um, international practice, obviously we live in an increasingly global environment, and and uh, graduates need to be uh, aware of the opportunities and threats that exist within uh, the global um, business uh, environment that we're all living in. And then uh, we looked at, um, or, or the uh, process uh, uncovered some emerging uh, skill sets that were uh, perhaps missing from, from other MBA programs that we were able to introduce as electives within our MBA program. So things like business analytics, we're all aware of the big data explosion and the number of opportunities that have come out of that. Um, and social innovation, again, looking at the, the, the triple bottom line and looking beyond merely um, the, the financial benefits of, of running an organization. So this is the origins of, of the program. 
Uh, our program itself uh, begins with uh, our launch week, which is our opportunity to get students uh, out of their the classroom and out of their comfort zone and into some of um, Northern Ireland's uh, stunning natural beauty. You can see uh, uh, a few scenes from this here. So this is where we build teams. We form um, uh, working groups that students will, will work within throughout the, the course of their MBA um, and to complete their, their, um, their assignments uh, throughout the, the, the program. So it's part of uh, the beginning of, of the, the, the peer learning, um, which is a, such an important aspect of, of the MBA program. Uh, looking at the MBA structure, we, we, we generally talk about this in, in three different strands. The first I've already mentioned, leadership skills development. Uh, this is done primarily um, through the William J. Clinton Leadership Institute, which is a world-class executive education center, which is uh, contained within our management school, and we're very lucky to have them. So our students are able to get the same kind of um, leadership capability development that um, the, the uh, Executive Education Centre puts out to uh, organisations throughout throughout Belfast, um, and then. Uh, in terms of the module coverage is the, the second strand. So this is uh, covering the main business functions, um, all of the, the, the topics that you will be familiar with within uh, a typical MBA structure. So you've got things like finance, marketing, accounting, uh, operations, strategy, etc. And also those um, elective modules that I mentioned earlier. So social innovation and business planning or business analytics are, are optional modules within this structure. And the third strand is, is business engagement. Uh, what makes an MBA different is the, um, the degree to which uh, students are um, focused on real world problems. So they're uh, interacting on a regular basis with uh, business leaders and, and representatives from, from different organizations. This takes place in a variety of different uh, methods from quite simple uh, uh, approaches, for example, having guest speakers come into to your classes or, or visit visiting a, a company um, as, as part of field trip to much more engaged methods. So for example, our um, student challenges, uh, we have a design sprint challenge in the first semester. And in the second semester, students will uh, conduct a, a, a consulting challenge again with the, working with the real world organization over a period of, of several days to define um, a particular business problem and, and develop a solution to that within their working groups. And this all culminates in the MBA project, which um, for which there are a number of pathways. Students are able to take a consulting uh, type project with, with uh, where they're working with a client organization over a period of several months, um, or they can develop a business plan if they're more of an entrepreneurial mindset, or they can do a research type project doing a deep dive into uh, perhaps a, a larger company using their, their published um, records published data. So that's just a brief overview then of the MBA and the structure and content of the programme. And this looks at um, how that breaks down over the course of, of the, the year. It is a one year program, a full 12 months uh, running from September to September of the following year. Some of the, uh, some of the content is delivered year long, um, particularly the leadership um, capability development, uh, what we call developing as a manager and a leader, that runs throughout the course of the full of the full year of the program. Other um, uh, elements of the, the the program are modular and are delivered in um, the first two semesters. So all of those different functional areas of the business that we discussed, those are all taught in in separate modules through semester one and semester two, and then that leads to the final section, which is the MBA project. This is the capstone project, and it, it takes up the final uh, three months of of the MBA, just before students embark on their final 
final project, they, they will normally undertake an international study tour. Um, and this brings in both of the elective modules. So social innovation and, and also business analytics and students will get to visit lots of different organizations in an, uh, an international environment and will complete a short work-based project um, during the course of their study tour. This is just a little shot of our students undertaking their um, design sprint challenge. So in this, uh, this uh, group work activity, they're working with uh, uh, typically an entrepreneur or a startup uh, organization. They are asked to design a product or a service or an app that will um, meet a particular need in the market. And they have to do this at uh, double quick speed. It's a very exciting and very um, uh, engaging type of, of group activity, which um, usually produ produces uh, pretty spectacular results. Uh, I mentioned previously about the international study tour. So each year around May, our students will go uh, overseas. Um, this is a, a clip from one of our previous tours, which was to San Francisco, San Francisco to, to Silicon Valley. Um, our students in that uh, case went and, and visited the likes of Netflix and Oracle, Shell and Walmart. So some really big name organizations, they were able to engage with them and able to complete a work-based project uh, in and around or focused around their um, elective modules. So I mentioned uh, entrepreneurship, uh, I think a, a few times already, but um, entrepreneurship is all, uh, uh, another uh, underlying um, or, or underpins the, the, the MBA. Um, it uh, is taught as, as one of our MBA modules, um, but the, in addition to that, uh, students have the opportunity to take um, an entrepreneurship based project if they want to, uh, uh, create a business plan. We have our design sprint challenge, as, a, as I mentioned, and entrepreneurship kind of feeds into lots of different areas of, of the MBA content. But additionally, um, we're very lucky that we have uh, nearby uh, Catalyst Inc, which is a, an incubator for startup companies within, within Belfast and Northern Ireland more broadly. And they run a, a wide variety of, of uh, programs for, for entrepreneurs, which can feed into our MBA. And we have been um, able to, to uh, send some of our MBA students out to participate those in, in recent years as well as a wide variety of different competitions and challenges. For example, Dragon's Den, uh, Santander Bank runs uh, an entrepreneurship award, which one of our students uh, won previously, Innovator and, and a number of other uh, prizes and competitions for, for entrepreneurs. Uh, graduates of our, of our program uh, can be sponsored for the, the startup visa, uh, which enables them to remain in the UK. Uh, for up to two years to, to uh, work on uh, or to build their uh, startup business. This is just a picture of, of Irene Breen, uh, who I mentioned previously. She, she actually won the Santander uh, Bank Entrepreneurs Prize for her uh, uh, project Bellamoon, which has since gone to market. Um, it's, it produces um, products for, for new mothers. Uh, so she was able to design um, her uh, business plan while studying her MBA and has since brought her, her business to market with the, the aid of, of funding from, from Santander. So um, you may want to uh, know about your career prospects when you, when you graduate from the MBA most most students are very interested in this aspect of it. Uh, we're lucky that within our MBA cohort, in addition to the, 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 the general um, support that's provided to all students at Queen's, the um, uh, recruitment fairs and, and, and uh, career support services, 
um, so, so as well as services through the graduate school. We we're able to provide one-to-one -one career coaching and support for our MBA students in-house within the, the management school. Uh, and what that means is you, you as a, an MBA student at Queen's get to work with a, a professional career coach who can help you identify um, opportunities within the local market and, and identify strategies for, for accessing those, for um, applying for winning that, that interview and ultimately winning the job. In addition to that, our graduates join a, a rich and, and diverse MBA uh, alumni network uh, with, with regular networking events and, and uh, opportunities. It truly is, um, Queen's truly is a, a, a global university and our, our alumni have um, spread to, to, to all uh, edges of the corners of the globe. Um, here are just a, a few examples of, of some of the, the roles and some of the areas in which um, our, our uh, MBA alumni have, have found themselves. But I'd like to hand over now to a few of our, our MBA alumni and let them tell you about uh, their experiences and, and where the MBA took them in their careers. So we're going to hear from Connor Lamb, who's the Chief Economist at Danske Bank UK, uh, from Ashley Rose, Rosen, who's a consultant at Deloitte, and Jessica Gambrill, who we've heard already, who's uh, an entrepreneur. So my role at Danske Bank is I'm the Chief Economist and Strategy Lead. So when I joined working in the economics area at, at the beginning and I broadened out my portfolio within the bank to also be working as part of the strategy team now. And actually the MBA has been really helpful with that um, because it's equipped me with those skills like strategic management, strategic thinking, but also around marketing, around financial accounting, around building business cases. Um, and those experiences and skills that I developed through the MBA have really helped me with that new part of my role on the strategy side. Um, and so it's, as I progress within my career, I have no doubt that the experiences that I've been able to gain as part of the MBA will continue to be really helpful with that. So now that I'm finished the MBA, I'm actually working as a consultant for Deloitte UK, which is a fantastic experience. Uh, I don't think I would have had even the confidence to apply for that type of role before, uh, but because the MBA gave me so much experience working on client projects, developing strategy plans, I really felt confident in, in going for that type of role. And so I think the MBA just gave me, if, if nothing else, confidence to, to go for what I want um, and a really broad base of knowledge. So I think I didn't even know what was out there and now I have a lot more sense of the exposure uh, to the business world. The MBA is, is very interesting in this regard because of course I came at the end, in the middle of the pandemic, and so for me, I was not necessarily doing some of the activities I thought I would be doing at the start of the course, but because the MBA had such an array of ways to prepare me for the, I guess, the rest of my life <laughs> or the rest of the world and where I want to put myself, I was actually then able to do something I didn't thought I was going to be doing, which is entrepreneurship. Um, and this is something that was not only able to be identified to me as something that was available to me, but also providing me networking opportunities to be able to be aware of who I can talk to to further that desire. Uh, so it's interesting uh, what, what Jessica said there in, in terms of uh, the opportunities that emerge through her MBA experience. And this is this is something that we see uh, quite a lot where uh, students enter the MBA with um, what they feel is quite a clear pathway ahead of them. But through the course of their studies, they uncover different interests or, or discover new passions that, that take them in uh, or new opportunities that lead them in, in directions they, they never thought were, were possible. So um, I'd like to talk now a little bit about the, the entry requirements for, for the MBA. So the current requirements as, uh, as of entry to September 2022-23 uh, academic year uh, include IELTS 6.5 with not less than 5.5 in any component uh, or equivalent qualification. So there are a wide variety of standardized English tests uh, in the market and 
quite a number of them that are accepted as equivalent to IELTS. You can find uh, full details of, uh, about those on the, the Queen's University website. We're typically also looking for a UK 2 one honours degree or equivalent qualification. Uh, do not worry if you're not sure what um, uh, your uh, undergraduate degree uh, or how that equates to UK 2 one honours. We have uh, a, a very experienced admissions um, and access service who uh, deal every day with, with making those equivalency judgments. Um, so you can simply go ahead and, and submit your application and, and they will um, inform us of the, the equivalency. Um, and then work experience. Now, this is a, a post experience program and typically we're looking for five years postgraduate work experience for admission to the program in September 2022. Um, this should normally include some management experience. Now that does not necessarily mean that you have to have held the title manager, but you need to have had um, responsibility for resources, for example, human resources, financial or physical resources. Um, and in some cases, we will consider a shorter um, period of work experience if uh, the, the applicant can demonstrate that they've made significant career progress within that shorter period of time. Students that don't meet the, uh, the academic requirement, the UK 2 one honours degree, can also be considered on the base of their um, experiential learning through our University Recognition of Prior Learning po Policy, or RPEL. So uh, all, uh, all applications are considered um, in a holistic sense on their own merit. Um, the application process includes a, a, a written a statement, a statement of purpose, as, as well as a, an interview. So if you feel that you perhaps might fall between the cracks, you don't quite meet a certain uh, criterion, I would still encourage you to make an application uh, and then use the personal statement and then the interview process to, to highlight your, your corresponding strengths to, to um, compensate for any potential weaknesses in your profile. In terms of the tuition fees, the, the fees for 2022-23 uh, academic year are £26,250. That includes uh, both the flights and accommodation um, associated with the, the international study tour. Um, so you don't need to pay anything additionally to that. I'd also like to, to mention that we have MBA scholarships available. So there are three scholarships of, of £5,000. That's the maximum uh, award. They are only partial scholarships, but they are um, uh, ring-fenced for, for MBA students, so uh, only uh, MBA uh, applicants are eligible for these scholarships. Okay, we're going to hear now a little bit about the, the, the final uh, MBA project, and we're going to hear from, from Ashley again, um, who's, who's one of our uh, MBA alumni. Mm -hmm. At the end of my MBA program, I undertook a dissertation and I did that with Grant Thornton Ireland. And what was really lovely about that experience was we were able to pivot uh, based on what was happening in the real world. So going into the project, um, we had some plans and then COVID-19 hit shortly before the project started. And uh, my supervisor at Grant Thornton was very flexible to, um, to undertake a project that actually would, would, uh, would investigate that a little bit more. And so I ended up doing a project on the employee experience during COVID-19 of uh, remote working. And so for that, I did some primary and secondary research. And what was fantastic is it was really an independent project, but my program supervisor, as well as my faculty supervisor was there to coach me and help me pivot along the way. So there was different check-ins throughout the summer. Um, and at the end, I did a presentation, not only at Grant Thornton, but there was different organizations outside, different banks and other places in Ireland and Canada that I got to present the findings to. Um, so it was a really, really good experience. And I found like I created a, a, a unique body of knowledge that I was able to carry forward even after the MBA. In terms of the dissertation deliverable, I ended up submitting a 10,000 word paper as well as a 2000 word executive summary. Uh, at the end of that project, I also did a 20 minute presentation to the client where they could ask questions and give feedback on the, on the results that I had found. 
So that was probably the most rewarding part was actually presenting that work to the client and seeing their reaction and how they found it to be quite valuable. There was a really great relationship between my client supervisor and then my faculty supervisor. So at the start of the project, we had meetings with all of us just to set out some expectations and make sure that um, the scope of the project was clear on both sides in terms of the deliverables and the expectations. And then throughout the summer, I worked more independently with the client directly, but then also doing check-ins with my faculty supervisor. And so they were there uh, throughout the process and also for my final presentation to that client. I think my dissertation was really pivotal in terms of setting up my post MBA career path. And that's because I got to work directly with the consulting firm. And then when I was going to apply at consulting firms for roles afterwards, it was a really uh, smooth transition because I had that experience. I understood a bit more of how the organization worked and I had an actual piece of consulting work that I could use as part of that uh, interview process. Okay, so that's just a little bit about our, our MBA project, which forms that the final third of, of, your, um, uh, of your MBA. Okay, at, at this stage, I'd like to hand over to uh, our esteemed program director, Dr. Martin Kelly, who's going to talk to you a little bit more about the, the MBA program in depth, and in particular about our, our MBA master classes. So over to you, Martin. Okay. Um, yeah. Um, I hope everybody can hear me or somebody will tell me if they can't. Um, firstly, um, welcome everybody. Um, thank you very much for attending. Um, we hope you, you get something from today in terms of finding a little bit more out about Queens and the, the unique MBA program that we, we, we have. Um, and I certainly look forward to maybe seeing some of you uh, in the not too distant future. Um, I'm the program director for the MBA. And I suppose uh, we all know over the last two to three years, the world has changed. And we also know that the nature of work has changed as well. So what we want to do and what this MBA does is, is try to, to, to make a difference, make a difference to you personally and make a difference to you professionally in terms of your career. So this making a difference is important because that's what we're about, isn't it? That's why I do what I do. That's why Stephen does what he does. And I, I would imagine whatever jobs or whatever you're doing, um, you want to make a difference. That could be just to your employer, that could be to your family, could be or to wider society, but it's it's an important uh, uh, purpose that we all have, uh, and certainly uh, in the world of work. But in the broader context, the world is changing and the world of work is changing. So we need to be prepared and we need to have the skill sets to be able to go out there and make a difference. So uh, Stephen has already mentioned we're, we're a leading Russell Group University and we have the um, Equus and AMBA accreditations and, 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 and that, that's great. But what does that really mean? That means that we're engaged in cutting edge research to make a difference to the world. That's, that's what we do, that's, that's what Queen's does. So our research is impactful. So it's, it affects real people and real organizations, to, 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 so it makes a difference. But importantly, if you come to Queen's, you will receive outstanding teaching and learning experiences. And that is something that's non-negotiable in my, my mind. That is exactly what you should get, okay? So that is important because you're, you're, you're coming to, uh, 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 to a faculty which is engaged in, in, in high level impactful research in management and, and, uh, and some of the grand challenges that are facing the world, but also their outstanding uh, uh, teachers and uh, facilitators and that's important, okay? So the second important point we recognize, and Stephen has mentioned this already, it is a life-changing experience. You've, you've heard from the alumni, you've heard already some of the people who've been through the process, um, just uh, listening to the last uh, delegate or participant who was talking in terms about the project. So it is a life-changing experience, and it's an investment in your future. So we recognize that you're paying big money um, and you, you want to get a return on that investment. And I, and I 
sincerely and you've just heard the some of the, the previous uh, uh, students we had on the program, it has been a life changing experience and it has made a difference and they've got a return on their investment because that's what it's about. You're investing in yourself here uh, and, and, and also hoping that that will obviously uh, uh, you bring that back to your organization. So it's about accelerating your career admit and making that difference to you personally in terms of skills, confidence. You heard the last alumni talking about confidence. She now feels much more confident to present and, and, and that's part of it. So in terms of your own skill sets, that, that uh, communication, confidence is important. And obviously professionally in terms of, of, of being able to uh, change and help organizations, uh, whatever type of sector you go into. So uh, you will be taught, as I said, from leading academics uh, alongside senior business leaders who have joined us. So we have actually employed what we call professors of practice. These are people who've just who, who have been leading leaders in their organizations, like some of the big accountancy firms or whatever, and they've come in and they now work for us as professors of practice. So in addition to actually getting, and I'll talk about that later, but in addition to having external speakers coming in from business, we also in the faculty have uh, professors of practice who are very much focused on the real world business because that's where they've just come from. So that's important. Um, so you get that sort of balance. Um, the other aspect is, I mean, purpose is a very important uh, concept now, isn't it? The, the, what's the purpose of business? What's the purpose of what we're doing in terms of the work uh, work, and, and how, we, how we work? And there's a big focus um, and in this program, and, and, and Stephen has, has alluded to this, on terms of the ethical leader and the ethical manager, that's important. Those concepts are, are, are critically important now. The idea of being tr trustworthy, honest. So the ethical leader, manager, and the, uh, the development of your own personal capabilities in that to lead and drive change, to make a difference. That's what you want to do. Whatever sector you go in, public, not for profit or private, this is what we want to do. We want to make a difference, uh, move things forward uh, for, the, for, the, for the better of uh, society, the better of the organization and the better of yourself. Uh, and that, that's important. And that's one of the themes this making it different again, uh, underpinning the MBA. So uh, the modules are delivered in an integrative and immersive way. And, and Stephen again has, has emphasized this and this has come up in some of the testimonials the, the modules, you just, just don't do accounting or you just don't do entrepreneurship. They're connected. They are, the, the, we make connections. So you don't do them like separate, but that module's finished, there's the next. It, it's connected. So the, you know, entrepreneurship operations, they are connected. So we see linkages and you're able to, you know, see the, see the bigger, the, 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 the whole rather than just the individual modules and immersive and we, we Stephen again has talked about this in terms of you know leadership and strategy and uh, you you get challenges and you, you 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 look at real world case studies real world examples you're actually applying it you're presenting to clients so that's what we mean by immersive and that's important um, okay go to the next slide Stephen thank you the other important point to, to mention it's it's we integrate theory and practice so we, we're trying to develop your critical thinking and that's what any MBA program should be doing is you know we're trying to to develop your 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 thinking skills that you you can also criticize um what the solutions and, and way maybe they're, they're not the right thing to do even ethically so that's what we mean by critical thinking just expanding just giving you alternatives and and, and maybe allowing you the space to be critical and to, to say no that mightn't be the right thing to do or the ethical thing to do it might be the most profitable thing to do but it may not be the most ethical thing to do so that's what we mean by critical thinking innovation and you've just heard loads of examples of that uh, in Stephen's presentation so this idea of you know bringing out your creative side you know you have solutions and together working together you you can actually solve a lot of problems so this idea of critical thinking, innovation, and problem solving is very important in terms of any MBA program. But we at Queens, this this is something you'll you'll see throughout 
in all the uh, everything you do on, on the course. Importantly, and I think it's important because I have taught on MBA programs with sort of 150 people on it, and, 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 and I personally don't think it works. So we have a small, diverse cohort of students, and that allows interaction, that allows me to connect with students, it allows you to connect with the faculty staff, and it, it, it leads to a better, more interactive approach to learning uh, and, a, and a better learning journey. So, you know, we don't want sort of 60 students in a, a class, so it just, it, it wouldn't work. Um, Stevens also mentioned this. I called it this the idea of experiential. So experiential means it by experience. So a lot, a lot of the modules you're going to apply the knowledge, and be it through challenge weeks or be it through um, making presentations to clients. So within the each of the modules that you'll be looking at, you will be working with local and international organisations, and that helps to develop your your networks. But that experiential doing. So there's there. This is the the theory, and this is the this is how some of the models. How do you apply them, and being able to apply them in a safe space in the real world is what is, is is a big advantage. Um, Stephen has also mentioned, and I think again, it's about making a difference. Um, the personalized career guidance. So you have a consultant-led career development workshop. So you may want to go to a different organization. You might when you finish your MBA, you may want to move into a new sector. Whatever you want. Uh, we have individual uh, coaching in terms of career development and that, that students value that a lot. The other uh, part of the uh, extra making a difference bit is in addition to the modules and that Stephen talked about in terms of structure, we, there, you can't cover absolutely everything in an MBA, but we also have a master class series, which is not assessed. It's just an additional uh, series of, of classes where we have, you know, major uh, um, speakers from the real world who will provide some key perspectives on topical business issues, sort of wide grand challenge issues, you know, you know, what's the world of work going to look like after COVID? Okay, um, and I've given some examples here about authentic leadership, sustainability, global taxation problem issues, equality and, and, and poverty and those sort of issues around the tax, thing. digital disruption, transformation. These are things that you'll touch on in, in parts of your individual, but they're, they're very wide. And we what we do is we bring somebody in to talk, give their personal experience of these big issues or grand challenges. So that is something in addition, it's not assessed. So it, you know, you can actually relax more with it, I suppose. But it, it, again, it's part of that. How have other people made a difference? How have other, um, you know, uh, leaders in the real world made a difference to, to 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 society? And that's really what we're we're looking at here. So it's it's quite unique, and it, it, it it's a great uh, idea for networking and and networking with previous students, alumni, etc. So again, these last two slides, and I think it's about the whole program. If I'm, if I, if I ask, and if anybody asks me why I would want to do an MBA, I, I would, and I've got one. I did an MBA many years ago, but it's about making a difference. That's what we do. That's why we want to to do what we do, uh, be it whatever uh, job we're in, and and you want to accelerate that, and you want to see how you can you can you can uh, you know develop your skills to make an even bigger difference because I can imagine you're all making a difference already, but how do you make a you know a more a, a bigger difference both to your organisation and to yourself? And I think Queen's MBA is unique in that respect, and I think you will enjoy that 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 experience. So I don't have anything else to sort of add. I mean, we'll, we'll obviously take some questions and, uh, and uh, anybody's got any, um, we're happy to try and answer those, but that, that's, that's really the sort of uh, background in terms of the program and, and what it's about. Thank you. Over to hey, Martina. Uh, Martina. Um... Yes, thank you so have, much. Have there been any any questions from the floor? Yes, we have a few questions. 
Um, so uh, are there any exchange programs options during the MBA program? That's uh, the first question. Uh, an exchange program, uh, not, not within our, our full-time MBA structure. As I mentioned, ours is a one-year uh, MBA. It's a very intensive program. Um, so students are, are on campus for the full 12 months. Um, and, and as such, it doesn't really lend itself to uh, kind of opportunities for, for exchange programs. Okay, thank you. Um, someone is asking what's the size of the class and uh, do you accept GMAT test and what's the minimum score? Um, and one more question from the same person, what's the minimum managerial experience they will need for, the, for this program? Okay, so uh, I'll, I'll take these if you don't mind, Martin. That's uh, fine, no, I'll have to. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, I'll, I'll address GMAT first of all. GMAT uh, or GRE or, or any of these standardized tests are not required. They're not part of our standard admissions uh, process. However, if you have uh, already taken GMAT or GRE and want to submit uh, a score as additional supporting evidence, we, the, the panel will certainly look at that. Um, but there is absolutely no requirement to uh, submit a GMAT score uh, for admission to our program. The entry require, uh, requirements, the criteria are very simple. It's a, a good solid undergraduate degree, uh, roughly equivalent to UK 2-1 honours. Um, five years work experience, post-graduation, um, and then for um, applicants who are, whose first language is not English, then IELTS 6.5 or, or equivalent. In terms of management experience, I, I think I mentioned earlier, we look at each application holistically. So um, we, we're not requiring uh, students to have years and years of, of, of experience with manager as their job title. What we're looking for are applicants who have had um, uh, experience with response, where they've held responsibility, whether that's managing teams or managing projects or managing budgets or, or some other resources. Uh, so it, it's important to um, identify within your um, application form and, and particularly within your personal statement uh, when you come to, to write that, where you have, have shown that you have um, the, the potential, at least for, for leadership, right? You've, you've, you've held uh, a uh, position of responsibility within an organization for uh, a, a, a reasonable period of time. Uh, was, that, was that all parts answered? I'm not sure there were a few, few strands to that question. Uh, excuse me, could you uh, repeat uh, because I... Yeah, sorry, had... Martina, uh, there were a few few parts to that person's question. I'm not sure if I answered all of them there. Um... Yes, 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 you, you have answered. Uh, yeah, uh, thank you so much. Uh, there is a question about the scholarships. I believe that you have already mentioned them, but uh, for those uh, who have missed uh, this part of the presentation, could you repeat uh, what's the options for scholarship? Yes, so the, the options for MBA scholarships or, or, or um, scholarships for MBA students are, are um, uh, limited to partial scholarships. So we have a, a scholarship fund uh, each year, which is ring fenced uh, specifically for MBA students. There are three awards of £5,000, four of £2,500 and five of £1,000. Each of those is awarded as a reduction in tuition fees. And the, the scholarships are decided each year in, in July. Um, the, uh, any any uh, offer holder uh, who has completed the application process by the end of June in the particular year of application will be invited um, to apply for the MBA scholarships. And they're, 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 they're uh, awarded based on, on qualification experience and also their um, uh, evidence of, of, of kind of uh, uh, career planning and so on. Great. And are the options are different for the international students or 
uh, there's no um, different requirements for them. No different requirements. It's the same. It's the same program. The, only, the only difference in terms of the entry requirements is, a, is, is in, in, for English language, which is a requirement both for mm -hmm. the university and also for UK visas and immigration. Um, so the current uh, uh, hurdle point or benchmark is, is IELTS 6.5 or equivalent. So we will equally accept uh, TOEFL um, or Pearson PTE or Duolingo or um, Cambridge main suite examinations, a wide variety of, of standardized English tests that can be um, submitted as, as equivalent, as well as um, a, a number of, of uh, secondary school um, public uh, uh, examinations. So for example, um, IGCSE. Uh, or CBSE. Great, thank you. And I can see one more question here in the Q and A box. Uh, it is more related to the program. So, how does program help students to understand better the concept of sustainability? And one more question for the same person. Um, and even more, how the program helped them to apply its principles in practice. Um, I'll answer that uh, if that's okay, um, Stephen. Please. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Anwin, I think Anwin Sheriff asked the question. So um, thank you. It's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's an excellent question. So thank you for that. Um, absolutely. The answer is absolutely yes. The, um, the, 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 the whole basis, all of the modules will bring in some element of sustainability. Uh, I, I, I'm just thinking, say, the accounting module. Um, there are now, as maybe the, uh, some, some of you on the call probably know, there are reporting um, frameworks now for which, which, which organizations have to report how they're impacting on the environment, um, how they're impacting on social issues, uh, as well as the economic and profits. So they have to, what we would call, report on their triple bottom line. So we're, th this will come through these ideas of ethics, sustainability, um, and, and unsustainability um, will come throughout all the modules. And in terms of the project, we would have had students who've actually looked at the whole issue of around sustainability reporting or um, sustainable, sustainability in the supply chain um, for or looking at that as a project for organizations. So it is it is a massive um, underpinning of, of, of the program. It comes through all the modules and it, it is a very important issue, not just the theory of it, but application. And, and certainly that application will come in through assignments even, but also within the projects. So um, a, a very good question and something that I think is important to highlight. Thank you. Great. Thank you so much to both of you. I believe that we have answered uh, all of the questions for now. Um, if you guys have any other questions, please do not hesitate to type them. We have uh, um, a little bit, um, a more time to uh, six o'clock. So, um, uh, Stephen, Martin, thank you so much for your time. Uh, it was thank wonderful you. meeting, and for me, it was a pleasure to talk with you today and to learning more about the Queen's uh, Belfast MBA program. Um, I will uh, want to remind everyone that they will uh, re receive a link with recording of this session, so um, you'll be able to watch it one more time. Uh, for those uh, of you uh, who have more questions, um, I leave a link here in the chat uh, to um, uh, MBA program in the university website. So you can visit it and find there uh, whatever uh, you want to know. I want to thank everyone one more time for attending. We hope that we helped you to make your decision about applying at Queen's Belfast. And on, on behalf of Uni, my team, I want to wish everyone good luck in their academic journey and hope to see you again soon. Thank you, Martina. Bye for now. Thank you, And Martina. have a nice evening. All right. Goodbye, everyone.